Welcome to Southern Times News and Eva Freak from the depth of the Niger Delta. My name is Anglas A.E. Simbe. In the highlights, Pickett shuts down ShopRite Mall in Delta States. Department of State Security Services DSS invites food and cattle dealers for blocking supply to the south. Governor Okowa of Delta States rules out compensation for building on right of way. Potako female designers honor Ivy's at Tukokpan. And in sports, Aqua United slams Rivers United in New York. For a special report, Port Harcourt singer Ben Jeezy, diagnosed with brain tumor, needs six million naira. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, we'll bring you the news in detail. Please stay tuned. <music> Welcome back. We begin the news from Delta State where the South African owned retail giant ShopRite, located at Delta Mall in Efren Delta State, has been reportedly shot down by protesting workers. The picket who accused the management of inhuman treatment blocked the entrance of ShopRite Mall on Tuesday morning. A protester tells journalists that the protest is to reject being enslaved by a foreign firm in their country. According to reports, the protest is taking place in all ShopRite malls across the country at the same time. The protest, which began at 8 a.m., however, did not affect other shops within Delta Mall. Still in Delta State, Governor Ifai Okowa rose out compensation for houses, which started within the last two years on the right of way, obstructing the, drain, the drainage project. Okowa on Monday said the storm drainage projects being executed by the state government in part of Wari and Efron would be ready in 2022. He stated this while speaking to newsmen after inspecting the flood control projects ongoing in the area. Okowa, who was conducted around the project by the Director General of Wari, Ovie, and Environs Development Agency, Ovozue Makoli, says the challenges posed by COVID-19 pandemic slowed down the pace of work. Macaulay, however, assured that his administration would scale up activities to enable the government to deliver on time. In another development, the Amalgamated Union of Foodstuff and Cattle Dealers of Nigeria says its leaders have been invited by the Department of State Security Services, DSS, for blocking the supply of foodstuff and cattle from the north to the south. The General Secretary of the Association, Ahmed Alarama, said this at a press conference in Abuja on Monday. Ahmed says the association's president, Mohammed Tahir, is currently with the DSS. The blockade, which has entered its fourth day, was done in protest of the alleged killing of their members in the South. Report says they have, been requ they have requested billions in compensation from the federal government. Delta State Police Command says it will deploy a total of 8,292 police officers for the conduct of the local government elections on Saturday, March 6, 2021. The election is to fill the offices of chairmen and councillors in the 25 local government areas. The total of 500 councillor seats will be filled with 20 words of the 25 local government areas in the state. In a statement by the police public relations officer, Bright Edafe, he cautions all parties in the election to abide by the rules of engagement, warning that any violation would be met with stiff resistance. Edafe says no security aid will be allowed into the polling units with their principles. The Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria, SPDC, has restated its commitment to support the federal government's goal of using the country's proven gas reserves to trigger economic activities for gas-based industrialization. SPDC's Managing Director and Country Chairman, Mr. Osage Okumbo, says Shell's support is shown in the company's multi-billion dollars investment in four of the Nigerians' national Petroleum Corporations and NPC's seven critical gas development projects. Speaking at the 12th International Conference and Awards of the Gas Association, which held virtually with the theme, 
powering forward, enabling Nigeria's industrial, industrialization via gas. Mr. Kumbo stated that Shell has invested heavily in the Assad North gas projects. In fulfillment of Rotary International's focus on protecting the environment, the Rotary Club of Port Harcourt Creekview, in partnership with animal and environmental biology students from the University of Port Harcourt, Students Energy, My Environment and My World Book Parts in a project held at the Port Harcourt Tourist Beach tagged Keep Port Harcourt Tourist Beach clean. Rotarians and partners gathered at the Port Harcourt Tourist Beach with cleaning equipment to remove waste on both land and water. Some members were sighted on speedboats with nets clearing the waterways of plastics, decaying clothing materials and water hyacinth. The president of the Rotary Club of Port Harcourt Creekview, Rotarian Terry Bobeni, said sustaining the environment is a Rotary area of focus. Speaking to journalists, the district governor, District 9141, Rotarian Virginia Major, said the essence of the project is to review, revive the ocean and restore it to its, to its original state of clear blue waters. While commissioning the billboard and waste bins donated to the Port Harcourt Tourist Beach, the district governor appealed to the managers of the facility to keep the environment clean by using the materials provided rather than disposing waste in the sea. We take a quick break now. When we return, we will bring you more news from the Niger Delta. Please stay tuned. to Southern Times on Eva Freak News. Do remember to follow us on all our social media handles. At tweet on Twitter, it is at Eva Freak News. On Facebook, it's Eva Freak News and Business. And on Instagram, it is Eva Freak NG. Now we bring you more stories from River State where persons alleged to be members of a Nelga Security Peace and Advisory Council, OSPEC, a local vigilante group in Omoduaga, a Moha local government area of River State, have been arrested by the Agbeda Police Division for allegedly destroying houses belonging to the Community Development Committee Chairman, Mr. Azuone, and some members of the community. In an interview with our correspondent, the CDC chairman explains that he was at home on Saturday when persons suspected to be OSPAC members invaded his compound and attempted forcing themselves into his house but could not because of the burglary proof. Mr. Azuwane alleges that the suspected vigilante members destroyed the windows of his house while houses of those perceived to be his supporters were destroyed. The CDC chairman also alleges that some community stakeholders against his administration are working with OSPAC to destabilize the community. He further disclosed that the latest attack was due to his insistence that the vigilante group must go for profiling at the local government council as directed by their Moha local government chairman, Mr. Tom Aliezi, before commencing the pressions. Meanwhile, the River State Command of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, has paraded 28 suspects arrested for vandalism and illegal petroleum products trade. Railway metal plates and trucks loaded with illegal petroleum products were among items confiscated by the command. The state commandant, Mokta Lawal, during a press briefing at the command's headquarters in Port Harcourt, vowed that the command, in conjunction with other security agencies, will stamp out vandalism along rail tracks and all installations in the state. He expresses disappointment on miscreants who have chosen to stall the laudable efforts of the federal government's economic plan. Commandant Lawal says his command has put in measures to stamp up vandalism along the rail tracks in the states. 
On the Forensic Reactions have drilled a news article which was originally meant to create awareness on the first woman to occupy the, the World Trade Organization Director General's office. Dr. Okonji Wala resumes office as the Director General of the World Trade Organization WTO on Monday and she faces racial discrimination as a Swiss newspaper tagged her a grandmother. The headline reads, this grandmother will be the chief of World Trade Organization. In an apology, the editorial team of the newspaper expressed regrets on the headlines, calling it inappropriate and unsuitable. However, many viewed the apology holding no water, as the author, John Dirk Haberman, was declared not guilty of casting the headlines. A communique released on 26th of February failed to point out who was responsible for the headline. It claims that the original draft by Mr. Haberman was titled, For the First Time, An African Woman Moves to the Top of WTO, which the editors declined to use. Reacting to the article on her Twitter handle, Ngozi Konjewala expressed gratitude to the voice of UN women leaders and 124 members in Geneva who called out the racist and sexist remarks. The organizers of Slum to School mark a major milestone as they officially launched a partnership with the United States Embassy. Slum to School is a volunteer-driven development organization which empowers on underserved children from the slums and remote communities with quality education, entrepreneurial skills, and other support. The Slum to School has built a virtual learning hub for children in communities to aid in their learning. The high point of the event is a hosting of the United States Ambassador to Nigeria, Mary Beth Leonard, the Consular General, Claire Perangelo, the Public Affairs Officer, Mr. Stephen, Stephen Ibeli, and other high-ranking American diplomats and dignitaries to the Slum to School Innovation Club. The hub is an addition to the American centers around the world designed to increase the development around innovation, STEM education, cultural identity, and foster learning opportunities for young people. The founder of the organization, Otto Orondem, is in a, in a remark expressed hope that through this partnership, thousands of young people will be impacted. We take a short break now. When we return, we will bring you our crime story. suspected cultists were among the 31 persons paraded on Wednesday by the Delta State Police Command in Asaba. The cultists still confessed to being members of the Aro Baga and Ayer Confraternity were arrested by police operatives from the command's anti-cult unit while raiding flashpoints in Agbo and Sapele towns in Delta State. Two locally made cuts to size guns, two den guns, 
one dagger and a laptop were recovered from the suspects, according to the State Commissioner of Police, Mr. Ari Mohamed Ali. Eleven other suspects were arrested across the state for various offenses including armed robbery, use of unauthorized siren and number plates, unlawful possession of firearms, impersonation of military officers and car snatching. He commended the people of Obiaruku in Okwani council area for demonstrating rare bravery that led to the arrest of five suspects in their hideouts following the confession of a suspected kidnapper who earlier turned himself in. The Pataka Female Designers Association appoints the editor-in-chief of Eva Freak Business and News Digest, Mrs. Ivy Etogokpan, as their patron. Mrs. Etogokpan was also given an award of honor for her contributions to the socio-economic development of the Niger Delta at her office in Port Harcourt, River State. Speaking during the visit, the president of the association, Doris Gamdede, creative director of Jazz Effects Fashion House, stressed the need for collaboration between the fashion and media industry in the region. Responding, Ivy Etikopan expressed optimism in working closely while stating that, as a former dressmaker herself, she understands their vision, aspirations, and challenges. The association has a fashion and arts fair slated for April 2021 in Port Harcourt. A quick commercial break and we will return with Spot News. Do stay tuned. timely stories and news remember to follow us on all our social media handles on twitter it is at eva freak news facebook is eva freak news and business and on instagram at eve Afrique ng nigerian professional football league npfo record goal scorer mfon Udo clinically finished off a seth Maye assisted opening score for host aqua united as the dispatched Rivers United 3-0 in a March Day 13 fixture at God's Will at Pabio Stadium in New York, Udo's goal came after 40 minutes to break the deadlock. Both sides came into the fixture with contrasting fortunes from March Day 12, with Aqua United securing a point in Aba against Enyimba Football Club, while Rivers United lost to Warrior Wolves in Ozoro, Delta State. The host, Aqua United, added to their first half Added to their first half lead after 55 minutes, despite the setback, Rivers United pushed on to reduce the deficit. Their misery was compounded in the ninth minute by the midfielder Maurice Chukwu, which gave Aqua United its third and final goal. March day, 14 fixtures for the weekend Nasarawa United Football Club vs. Lobby Stars, Rivers United vs. Jigawa Golden Stars, Heartland Football Club vs. Abia Warriors, and Eyimba vs. FC Ifai Uba. Now we'll bring you our special reports. In our special reports, the contemporary gospel singer Benjizi Zaki Omale has reportedly been diagnosed with brain tumor and urgently needs six million naira for surgery. Benjizi is a multi-talented singer whose music has blessed lots of people and his graphics is top-notch. Ace comedian K.O. Baba disclosed this on his social media handle. The Port Harcourt Gospel Music Sensation, who recently released a hit single titled Omologo, is also said to be a talented graphics designer. Meanwhile, Port Harcourt Gospel artists converged to pray for their friend Benjamin Omale, even after money has been raised for his surgery. Those who attended the prayer session, which held at Eden Lounge on Ever Road, include fans of the Sikh singer, comedian K.O. Baba, Olumati Isaiah and others. In another special report, Mr. Daniel Isaac, who lost his sight, cries for help. What started as a mild irritation in the eyes turns out to be glaucoma that has made 45 years old Daniel Isaac to lose his sight in 2016. Daniel is a man who grinds food in Mal 3 markets in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, a business he has been doing for about 20 years. Despite 
being visually impaired, he was not deterred from seeking his daily means of livelihood. Daniel has a daughter by name Precious. And in an interview with BBC News Pigeon, Daniel said, like other businessmen, he also faces challenges as business can be slow on some days. The loss of his sight has brought him anguish after he was abandoned by his wife in 2015. For Precious, who is 19 years old, her father's condition has changed her life. She feels her dream of becoming an architect might not be fulfilled. Both Daniel and his daughter, Precious, live in a shanty apartment, yet unable to pay the rent. Daniel is a native of a Kwaibom state in southern Nigeria who is willing to acquire a new skill if given the opportunity, if given the opportunity, and he therefore solicits assistance from kind hearted individuals. It has been Southern Times on Eva Freak News. Let me take you through the stories that made headlines again. Protesting workers shut down ShopRite Mall in Delta State. Department of State Security Services, DSS, invites food and cattle dealers for blocking food supply to the south. Governor Okowa rules out compensation for buildings on right-of-way. Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria, SPDC, pledges support for federal government's 5,000 billion cubic feet gas expansion plan. And Port Harcourt's female designers honor Ivy Davis at Tukokman. In sports, Aqua United slams Rivers United in New York. In a special report, Port Harcourt singer Ben Jeze, diagnosed with a brain tumor, needs six million naira, and a call for help by Mr. Daniel Isaac. Thank you so much for joining me today. Keep a date with me next Saturday. Remember, coronavirus is real. Protect yourself and others. Wear a face mask and avoid large gatherings. My name is Aisimbe Nglas. Thank you.